from the CBS Bay Area studios, this is KPIX 5 News. Welcome back. It's just about 6.30. Good morning. I'm Devin Feely. And I'm Jessica Flores. Today, the brand new Transbay Terminal at the base of Salesforce Tower in San Francisco is open for business. Muni buses are the first to roll through. The 5, 7, and 35 lines will now be moving from the temporary terminal to their new home on 1st and Mission Streets. So far, the terminal has cost $2.25 billion. The project was first envisioned as the Grand Central of the West, but getting Caltrain and high-speed rail on board will be a long way off. I think we're looking at somewhere in the range of 2027, 2028. So about 10 years is what we're aiming for uh, to get trains here. At least another $4 billion is needed to get the trains running. In the meantime, the new terminal will be a park, shopping area, and bus station. Other bus lines like AC Transit will start service in the terminal in August. At least one person is being treated for major injuries after a solo vehicle crash in Santa Clara. The California Highway Patrol says it happened about 1.30 this morning on southbound U.S. Highway 101 near San Tomas Expressway. There is no word yet on the conditions of other pas passengers. The city of Berkeley and workers union have reached a deal to avoid a strike by nearly 600 city employees. The tentative deal was reached yesterday with the Service Employees International Union, which represents clerical and maintenance workers. Now, pay and safety were amongst the key issues in that dispute. An appeals court in Riverside County has reinstated California's assisted suicide law. At least for now, the court gave opponents of the law until July 2nd to file a petition. Last month, a Riverside County judge declared the procedure in which the law was passed is unconstitutional. The law gives terminally ill patients with less than six months to live the ability to request end-of-life drugs from their doctors. Five other states and Washington, D.C. currently have their own right-to-die laws in place. The late physicist Stephen Hawking has taken his rightful place among Britain's greatest scientists. His ashes were interned at London's Westminster Abbey yesterday between Charles Darwin and Sir Isaac Newton. Hawking died in March at the age of 76 after decades of living with motor neuron disease. After yesterday's service, a message of peace, hope and global harmony recorded in Hawking's own words was beamed into space. Hawking's daughter Lucy says the transmission would be aimed at the nearest black hole. Investigators in Scotland are looking into a major fire at the Glasgow School of Art. More than 120 firefighters were on hand to extinguish the blaze, the second major fire there in four years. Now, nearby properties were evacuated as a precaution. There are no reports of any casualties. The Navy has revealed plans to retest part of Hunters Point Shipyard in San Francisco over concerns of a botched cleanup. An investigation found soil samples used to test for radiological contamination are unreliable. Two former Tetra Tech employees admitted to falsifying records, though the company has denied any wrongdoing. The Navy will start with Parcel G, which is the first in line for redevelopment. It has also agreed to retest Parcel A, where people are already living. The Navy maintains that land is safe. Tetra Tech has offered to pay for independent retesting of the shipyard. The process is expected to begin in the fall and last three to six months. Two people died when their small plane slammed into a rural road in San Bernardino County and burst into flames. The single-engine aircraft crashed just short of the Hesperia Airport yesterday. Federal investigators are looking into what went wrong. Over to Hawaii, this is video from the lava flows flowing from fissures around the volcano on the Big Island. It's feeding enormous rivers of lava that end up in the Pacific Ocean, creating steam clouds. Now, more than two dozen fissures have oozed or erupted lava over the past six weeks. 2,000 children were taken into U.S. custody along the southwest border over a six-week period in April and May. It's the direct result of the Trump administration's new zero-tolerance policy for adults who cross into the U.S. Illegal, illegally. Still yesterday, the president blamed Democrats. I hate the children being taken away. The Democrats have to change their law. That's their law. Nobody wants them separated, and uh, I think this legislation actually tries to address that. 
Now, there is no specific immigration law requiring children to be separated from their parents after illegal entry. Republicans in Congress are working on a compromise bill between conservatives and moderates in their own party. President Trump posted on Twitter yesterday that any bill must include funding for a border wall. Democrats tell The Washington Post no one has approached them for bipartisan discussions. San Francisco's next mayor, London Breed, went to Chinatown and talked with community leaders, promising to make headway on creating more affordable housing. That is a commitment that I'm determined to fulfill, creating the opportunities to link our people to housing opportunities in their neighborhoods, in the places where they feel most comfortable and safest. During her meeting with community leaders yesterday, Breed also acknowledged the loss of Ed Lee, who died last November. He was the city's first African-American mayor. Breed will serve the remainder of his term until January of 2020. Researchers are a step closer to protecting California beachgoers from shark attacks. Governor Jerry Brown proposed budget includes giving researchers almost $4 million to place high-tech acoustic tags on more sharks. The goal is to track their location in real time and give lifeguards a head up, heads up when they get too close to shore. We need to know about where they're going and where they're spending their time. And when it detects a shark, it sends the information to the cloud. And then the lifeguards get an email alert saying a shark was just detected at this location. Now, the new funding will also provide lifeguards with drones so they can watch from their towers when the sharks turn up.